Okay, so here's the art that I actually like to use for WoW, even though I don't, uh, I don't actually officially have a WoW. I guess I made a lot of them for the Hardcore Classic series to do with a Hunter. But this is the only one that I actually have that I like to use for WoW, which is really just an alternate one of the one I use for Hearthstone, which is this one, but I always forget. Then I'll go in with this, like last time, and I accidentally used this, but this is what I actually use for Hearthstone. This I was going to maybe switch over to in Hearthstone after a while, like when I'm done with the series I'm doing uh, currently in that, like my gimmick deck thing. But, yeah, this is going to be episode two of my Throwback Thursday little mini-series of WoW. And what I was actually going to try to do today that I said even last time that I would do is... Uh, let me just walk around and kill stuff while I do my intro. And that'll be the whole episode because I don't have a ton of time. you got to make sure it's not like anything too much... Too close to my level, though. But no, the point is that <clears throat> I like this as sort of a background, almost like a just chatting series because it's so... Uh, you know, th this is going to be a no abilities character, obviously. So I, I started this one a while ago. I just did like one or two episodes just to sort of introduce it. It was a paladin with no abilities, which I joked is like, basically, there's no difference because paladins are such a shitty class that, again, not shitty in terms of capability. Yes, they can be good healers, good single target. Some of their cooldowns are obviously amazing lay on hands and stuff bubble. But what I mean is that in a gameplay sense, they were an unfinished class and Blizzard even admitted that. Uh, in some interview a long time ago, like, they were intending to do something else, which I can't remember exactly what it was, but they were intending to have a whole other system for how they work, and then they just scrapped it and said, fuck it, we're just not going to do it. Uh, there, There's some pretty well-documented thing. <clears throat> I wish I could remember it offhand, but it's a well-documented instance where you're able to basically say they had another system of abilities, and they didn't do any of them, and so all you were left with was the seal and the judgment. And so what the fuck is the point of that? Like, I think Crusader Strike was supposed to be an ability in vanilla, which may be this, being Season of Discovery, of course. I didn't know going in what they were going to do with it. But being Season of Discovery, of course, uh, they could rectify that and actually add some of those abilities back. But that's besides the point. Forget that it's Season of Discovery. Just assessing the Paladin Classic WoW, all you do is... Uh, judgment seal, judgment seal. That's literally the whole fucking thing. Everything else is a cooldown or a situational ability, which doesn't really count. So your core rotation of abilities is very, very limited and, in fact, non-existent. Even with a class like Warriors, you'd say, oh, well, you're limited, but you have... You end up getting a decent amount of options that at least don't have cooldowns, like whether it be hamstring or whether it be um, like back pedal like a clown, but in PvE, it really doesn't matter. It's not like you're really trying to run away, but you are trying to, you know, you have hamstring, you have mortal strike, you have heroic strike. You know, you don't have a ton rend, but at least you have some illusion of abilities that you're going for. Again, rend and hamstring are at least they were kind of spammable. In fact, what's funny is people would sometimes spam hamstring for damage because you could do it on top of heroic strike which seems weird and almost like it doesn't make sense, but th there is a certain, I can't remember now, but there is a certain logic behind that. But my point is Paladins suck. Nobody would defend their design. Anybody who likes them, it's like some sort of gaming psycho test. Like, uh, what, what type of serial killer are you? Or, you know, take this test to find out if you're a psycho. This is the gaming version of that. If you actually like Paladins and Classic WoW and how they work and think they're a well-designed class, you are the gaming version of a psycho. It's like some sort of Rorschach test right, psychological test you can do, that it's just a trash class. Again, not functionally, and it can still be satisfying to auto-attack, which is a testament to how good this game is, but that's still besides the point. It just is an unfinished garbage class, right? Every other class at least has some illusion of something. People will make fun, you know, I'm a mage. Well, what did you do as a mage in raids? All you did was spam Frostbolt, which I didn't like to do. I loved fire, actually, but I was forced to use Frost, obviously, because every uh, raid in vanilla cucked you, like, oh, Onexia, all the early ones, Onexia, uh, fucking Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, all of them had fire, so you had to deal with the fact that everything was going to be immune or highly resistant. So you were forced to use Frost for that reason alone, Right, which ideally would be more so used for PvP, like with uh, uh, crowd control and stuff like that. But the point is that even then, yes, you're spamming Frostbolt, but at least you have other options. You have Fire Blast, you have all kinds of stuff. Even if you want to say some of it's situational, like uh, crowd control, it's just not quite the same thing. At least you theoretically could use other abilities, even if you tend to not do it. Right, It's not an optimal thing, like, oh, I could use Arcane Missiles, I could use Frostbolt, I could use Fireball, I could use Fire Blast, I could use Frost Nova, which is a cooldown, so I'll exclude that, but you know what I mean. I could use 
Oh shit. I could use some of these AOEs. All it would take is like aggro and two things and you could die. Um, right, I have all those options at my disposal, even if you're gonna, oh shit. It's not like I'm not allowed to run away, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. I mean, the one time I aggro something that I don't mean to aggro, like when I'm playing the rogue in Lord of the Rings online and then I, you know, I'm standing there looking at my map or my quest, reading through my quest text or something, and then it aggroes something while I'm in stealth, and so I don't get the jump on it, and I actually die because of that. Because also those games don't have a fucking aggro range, so it'll just chase you till the end of the earth or, or till you go into a town or something. But no, the point with that is, again, with this, with a paladin, what abilities would you have the option to have at any point? Not even just at a low level. And the answer is you wouldn't have anything. You would literally have... Just the judgment and the seal. Everything else is a cooldown. Oftentimes pretty long. You know, consecration could be okay. Obviously, uh, hammer of justice and stuff like that. But you really don't get anything. You might get better seals. Why is this guy so strong? Why can't I? Why can't I kill this guy? Like he's literally soloing me. I, I don't want to let it get this close. Then you'll risk some ability fucking you over, or you'll risk some mitigation chain getting you killed, or you'll risk, uh, br bro, 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 bro like getting crit by them or something right i always use that as a joke mitigation chain like oh i'm at half health how could i possibly die and then you die because you know you get parried dodged blo blocked everything in five in a row and so it seems like a mathematical impossibility but all it would take in a permadeath run for somebody who's done four of them and failed one of course the most recent but whatever three and one record it is fair to say you never want to let it come down to that. Oh, if I got a mitigation chain, I wouldn't be able to run away in time, and therefore I would actually die. So anytime you're at like half health, that can actually happen. Yeah, the point is, what I said I was going to do last week is the fact that... Um, this is why you shouldn't even fight stuff your own level, though. Like, oh my fucking god, I'm not paying attention. I said I was going to do Cataclysm, so I'll do that next week. So maybe each of these throwbacks should be like a two-episode uh, little mini-series. So... <clears throat> episodes one and two of throwback thursday were town of salem one of my favorite games ever the original among us and better version of that where it doesn't hide behind all those little gimmicky tasks that you have to do right but i did that for two episodes just to you know go back and just because it's a throwback like i'm playing games that i haven't played in years typically but just because of that doesn't mean I can't make a little mini series and do it multiple times because the whole joke would be, ha ha, you just played it last week. So how is that a throwback, right? What is a throwback to seven days ago? No, it's just the point of me doing it in the first place is a throwback. So I did this last week where I just kind of returned to doing it. Again, I had only done a couple episodes. The hardcore add-on doesn't seem to work with Season of Discovery. And so the whole format with this is, again, it's hardcore. Obviously, if I die, I delete the character, but also... I can't use any abilities except quote unquote within a group, but that I'm leaving as a very loose format. Like I'm not gonna group up in the wild. I may do a dungeon and if I do that or like a raid at level 60, you know, or I might do a battleground. So I'm just reserving it for that. Like I'm, you know, drawing energy from my group. So only in that context could I use an ability. Like I'm using a spirit bomb. So I'm forsaken by the light, but I can draw it and suck the lifeblood and life force out of other people to use my ability some sort of little rp like that that you could do but for all intents and purposes the server's probably dead anyway by now and whatever everything sort of moves fast in the classic era there was another fisherman npc but it was near a body of frozen water so i had to wonder what the fuck that's even about oh nice little chest which we set all kind of other RP rules for like our looting. But no, finally, my point was, I said that I was going to do the Cataclysm Classic just because that, that everyone knows that's when I stopped playing. Um, that's when I stopped playing WoW. I play, stopped playing at the end of Wrath originally, right, in retail. And then I came back very briefly in Cataclysm, got a character to 85, but I didn't really do anything. I stopped playing... In fact, I barely remember leveling from 80 to 85, so I must have kind of just rushed it and done it mindlessly just for the fa sake of it. But no, I effectively quit in Wrath, and then I didn't do anything in Cataclysm and beyond. I haven't played any of those. So every once in a while, every few years, I'll return to, uh, to retail briefly to like, oh, remember the time when I you know, played retail in the last 10 years, and all I would do is I would fly around on my uh, flying mount and just look at the cat Cataclysm zones and see like, Let's see what changed here. Let's see what's different. Let's just get immersed in RP and not really try to actually do anything current. <clears throat> 
but just to kind of see what's changed in particular with the old school zones and what happened in Cataclysm, because I never really fully appreciated that. So that's what I would do now, except instead of doing it here, uh, doing it in uh, retail and going back to the Cataclysm zones, why not go back to Cataclysm itself when it was current and look at the zones there? So that's what I'll do next week, just since we're subscribed anyway for the whole month, we'll get four episodes out of it. We'll get two for this and two for that. Even though I wasn't intending to do two for this, uh, it's okay. And so the thing with Cataclysm, of course, is uh, I won't like buy anything like a character boost or something if I have to. So what that means is I would love this in contested zones, actually, when you would see a dead enemy, because then you would know it could be a horde player or whatever, right? That they could be around, so it's kind of a cool, almost scary thing. What is this? What? Is this a mechanic that's like only for... What? Is this a mechanic that's only for Season of Discovery? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know what that is. Someone's hiding in there, but okay, then get them out. What the fuck? Immune. I actually don't know what that is. Yeah, they could have taken all kind of liberty... Oh, shit. They could have taken all kind of liberties with Season of Discovery, such as giving Paladins actual abilities finally. So it's ironic that I would decide to do this character here in Season of Discovery. Right? It was just sort of by coincidence because I didn't know what exactly this was going to be. But no, the point being that I, I chose Paladins more so to clown them with that. Like, oh, that they're kind of like that anyway, where, where they don't have abilities even in regular WoW because they're just designed like that or unfinished. But... Um, if you think about it, they're the best class to do because it would have to be a melee class. You couldn't do a mage or something, and you would want it to be a class that could wear mail slash plate. So it would have to be a warrior or a paladin in the most optimal sense. And so there's really no preference between a paladin or warrior, but <clears throat> I, I guess warrior would be better because it would give you the option of using a, sh uh, not a shield, but if dual wielding, right? That would be the one thing that if you want to do at some point, you could use either... You know, you could use ranged weapons to pull stuff, etc., which you can't do here. You could also use dual wielding, and you could also use a shield and a two-hander, you know, of greater variety. So, I guess warrior would actually be the best choice. But rage wouldn't do anything for you. Or I guess within the context of talents, you should still be, be allowed to use that. Um, and the reason why is because... You know, just because you can't use abilities doesn't mean you can't use talents, but I could make it... It might be almost impossible to do if you don't do that. Or you'd have to always be twinked out with gear, which would be hard to do considering the circumstance. And of course, it's not like we have a main to give ourselves gold and to try to, you know, buy stuff from the auction house. It's not like we wouldn't be allowed to do that, but we, we don't have one, like... Or I wouldn't be doing it externally. I would like, okay, I can buy stuff from the auction house here that might help me, but I would have to do it with only what I've earned on this character, kind of. Yeah, I'll do that Cataclysm thing next week where I just kind of go around and see what changed from Wrath because that's basically the last time I played, you know, in, in vanilla Wrath. I didn't play the Classic Wrath at all. And I played Classic BC, I think, very briefly or did I even bother doing it at all? Why do I remember... Yeah, why do I remember playing it? But it couldn't have been because... Was that... I actually don't know. I remember playing it, but I must have just done it like right when it first came out or something. But yeah, I mean, obviously I played uh, classic, uh, the classic re-release a fair amount, so I'm not going to do that again. I was just hoping to complete that 1 to 60 permadeath run as the hunter, but that was supposed to be like my last one and even my last time playing WoW. But then they did this, so I thought, you know, I may as well go out of my way and try it. Or why can't I see the... Oh, okay, you have to target them. Cursed at the Brewers League. Cursed at Brewers League. They have access to all the best ingredients. But no, the reason why I didn't do that is just because I was short on time and whatever. This is like my return to my other setup, if you will. Which is going to basically be where uh, I'm using my Shore MV7 instead of my Blue Yeti, which I, I kind of do half and half throughout the week. Like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, I do the Blue Yeti setup. Then Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I do this setup just because I'm at like kind of two different places. But this one had been fucked up where the internet wasn't working because there was a big storm last week. So, the, you know, the last week I've just been doing them all in the Blue Yeti setup, which is fine. But just now it'll be a little more uh, convenient while we're stuck here grabbing, grubbing grain. 
Rubbing for grain and hops. I really would like to give them some better tasting juice. Evershine. Bellow whiffs. Bellow fizz needs some Evershine. Okay, I clearly can't read. I have a casket of Evershine handy, but can you do me a favor? Brunal village could use a hand against the wild animals that wander nearby the snows. Sometimes they wander close. We're not. That's part of my RP. I'm dyslexic too. A paladin who can't use abilities and who can't read. We're not afraid of those bears and cats and boars. No self-respecting dwarf would be. But can you take care of those animals for us? Then we'd have more time for crafting and brewing. Oh, I thought he would almost say take care of the trolls instead. We're afraid of those. Six claw bear claws. Eight uh, elder boar snouts. Okay, that's fine. Or it's sometimes funny what they say here. Have you taken care of those while? But they'll say it even when you go to turn it in. But sometimes it's interesting. I'm on a quest and make to make the perfect stout. I know I can do it. Brewing's in my blood. I just need to find the right recipe. The frostman trolls grow plants, shimmer weed, high in the hills to the east. They use it in their strange tribal rituals. We dwarves haven't found much use for it, but it has a unique taste, and I want to experiment it within my brews. Get me some shimmer weed from the troll. Swipe it from the troll's shimmer weed baskets. So that's one you could do almost as a pacifist character, which that's also an interesting format, like how somebody did that in Mists of Pandaria, I guess, where at that point you can get experience by just doing gathering professions, etc. So he, sta uh, he stayed in the starting zone as a panda, right, as a pandaren, and got from 1 to 85 or 90 or whatever, right, just by doing that, which is surprising. But, I mean, obviously that would have been impossible to do well, you would have to think about it. Like, could you do enough quests in Vanilla WoW? There's no way you could. Could you do enough quests that would be like this kind of collect this, collect that, right? Just out in the world, like those little grapes from the vine patch in fucking Elwyn Forest. Could you theoretically do enough quests like that that don't require you to kill anything? And the answer is you definitely couldn't, but... That is very interesting. That one's kind of just more boring, though. It's not like it's difficult. He just stayed in the starting zone and mined stuff forever and whatever. Bitter rivals, I have to admit, the Thunder Brews make some good drinks, but they need to learn that their theirs isn't the only decent brew. Maybe you can help me teach them that lesson. Here, take this barrel to Barley Brew Scalder. Sneak into the basement of the Thunder Brew Distillery in Karanos and switch it with one of the barrels there. Then we'll see how their patrons like my brew over theirs. And if the barrels are guarded, then you might have to distract the guard. Yeah, just give him a little taste and he'll get drunk and then that'll distract him. The old heavy rain technique where Shelby gets the guy some drinks and then he gets him drunk and tells him, this guy insulted your mother and then he starts the whole fight or something. <laughs> that game is so ripe with all like the most cliche stuff possible, but it still manages to be good. Like the original modern choice game with respect to, you know... Whatever, like it deserved a sequel, but I guess we got sort of a shitty sequel in Beyond Two Souls, and then we got a, a another sort of thing with uh, Detroit was actually pretty good. I don't like this whole situation though. Everything's too high of a level. I gotta get, let's just get to like level ten in the session, assuming I'd even be able to do that much. And of course, we always get this sort of non-consensual. Oh my god. What? What? No, 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 no. Fucking bullshit, bro. I'm doing a fucking permadeath, no ability run, and you have a fucking wolf pack ambush bullshit out of thin air. Sometimes I'm a little careless, but what the fuck is that? Even as a lifelong alliance player, I, I don't know what this is. What the fuck? Why did they aggro from such a wide range? I wasn't even doing anything. That's obviously a rare spawn, which we don't want to go out of, out of our way to try to do that. Or, you know, you could argue that, oh, you, a hunter would be the easiest for this because you could have a pet, but you can't because having a pet would, requ would require using an ability like to actually call the pet, tame the pet, etc. Right? So, or maybe you could because... You could use the item to tame the pet and then keep that same one forever that you get from the item, not from the ability. So maybe you could sort of game the... Okay, I'm not too happy with this, but you could sort of game the system a little bit. But no, one of the other things I wanted to do for the Throwback Thursday format is that... Okay, I'm a, I said no one left. Is the fact that I wanted to see... Um, 
I wanted to do like these old school, almost like DOS games that I played as a kid. And some of them will be so obscure. Oh my God. Some of them will be so obscure that you wouldn't even know what they are when you hear them. Like Atlantis was some game I played as a kid or Moon Buggy or Neon Light. It's like a Mario knockoff where you fight like caterpillars and stuff, right? And for some reason, I was going back like last week uh, and trying to figure out how to get them to work and stuff like that and trying to use them with like DOS box and stuff. But for some reason, they wouldn't work. So I want to kind of try to do stuff like that. That would be such a fun thing. Go go back and play these super old school games that I either played as a kid. And obviously, it'd be a throwback because I haven't played them since. Or like other old school games like that that I just never got around to playing. And also, you know, like there's this Taco Bell game that I got as a kid where you go around with like a fucking sauce and you're shooting at snakes and stuff in like this crypt, right? And you're like, I I'm going to go do a throwback to that. And it's like, oh, yeah, we got it. You know, I don't think I like said, oh, we got to get Taco Bell to like my dad to to make sure we got the disc because I maybe didn't know it was a thing. But we happened to go there and we happened to get it. And then I tried it. Like, all these old-school computer games that are just fucking hilarious because, um... I don't know, it was such a novelty at the time. So there would be a- wait, what? Why are they over here, though? Or maybe this is what he wants for the Shimmerweed thing that I just sort of stumbled upon. You know, people have sort of lost the will a little bit to- okay. To explore in games or to go in blind and just that sense of discovery. And it turns almost into an ego thing. With respect to... I forget if they can daisy with rain stuff. I feel like sometimes you can. Um, uh, so everybody looks at it like an ego thing. Oh, haha, ha, you don't even know how to do that thing that you wouldn't know on a first playthrough. But, you know, everything's like trying to show off. Whereas in the old days, there was a certain purity to it where you took pride more in like, oh, you don't want to ask your brother or sister or parents for help to get through a hard level. You want to figure it out for yourself. And like you had strategy guides and stuff could be super cryptic, but there was a certain principle to it that you want to try to figure it out for yourself. But also there was an idea that you would not, uh, I don't know, it, it's turned into something else strange, which is partly a sort of thing of information overload that like games are so complicated now that you would lose your mind or have to do it forever trying to figure things out. But I still like to try to embrace playing them that way. I think my Path of Exile session shows that better than anything. Where where did he come from? It's not that I couldn't kill it. I just feel a little bit nervous. I, I don't want it to be so close. Right, like people are losing their mind, but I, I don't think they sometimes realize exactly what they're saying. I'm not really proving anything. I'm not saying, oh, I'm doing something so good or so special. However, I am saying that... I don't know, they're the ones making some weird claims and hindsight bias and it's just weird. I don't know what people are trying to prove, but something like that, especially like the ultimate bottom feeder effect, you know, what are you proving by looking at somebody's first playthrough? Oh, haha, ha, I was better in my first playthrough of the game, my blind first playthrough than you are. Like, okay, even if you were, what does that prove? But Second of all, you probably wouldn't have videos to prove it if you really want to consider that impressive. But third of all, why would that be your first thought? I'm watching somebody play a game for the first time and I'm judging them not just, again, I'm not even saying they're doing anything impressive, but I'm judging it and comparing it as somebody who's played the game far more than them, right? Like, oh, look how bad they are. But what do you expect when they're playing the game for the first time? If they're actually doing it blind, wouldn't you expect them not to be good and not know what they're doing and sort of you know, I even embrace that. Like, I don't want to know what I'm doing sometimes. I try not to read some of the text and stuff. There's not even really an excuse at that point because I'm not trying to prove anything with it. I'm just like, I enjoy, you know, knowing it's half the battle. I just enjoy doing things that way. I don't see why it's such a big deal. Right, but everybody's trying to prove something or, or egotistical. So I always call that like the bottom feeder effect. It's one thing if you do something high level, like, oh, you get to end game, max level, world first raid clear, you know, best PvP in the world, top rank arena player. You know, if you're one of those, that's different, or like a speed runner, etc. But if you're just doing like a first playthrough, I have to wonder what it is you think you're proving because of the simple fact that I better stay away from that fucking center. Um, what it is that you're proving because that's like the ultimate bottom feeder effect that you're like 
you're not impressive or special, but you want to feel like it. So you go seek out stuff like that. Somebody playing a game for the first time, somebody playing a game blind, somebody playing a game with a certain format, and then you laugh at them, oh, ha ha, look at them fail at this thing. But yet, so you're so mediocre that you have to try to feel superior to somebody like that instead of actually, if you were actually impressive in one of those people I just said, like a world first speed runner, best PVP in the world, world first raid clear, then you wouldn't need to seek validation from externality like that from other people. So instead you would say, you wouldn't need to say anything. You would just kind of mind your own business and feel satisfied with what you do and let that speak for itself. But instead you have these ordinary bottom feeder mediocre clowns who want to seek, oh, well, I'm better than somebody playing the game for the first time, ha ha, or I'm, you know, Something like that. You're you're seeking like the lowest common denominator, the, the worst possible example of somebody playing the game that you could find. And the reason why that's disturbing is because it's sort of an admission from yourself that, oh, you know, if you were actually good, you wouldn't need to do that, or something along the lines like that, where it's just not you're not really proving anything, but you kind of have a desire to prove something nonetheless. I'm certainly allowed to eat food and use items, right? There's no restriction on that. Um, even to the point where you might say you should... Well, but see, professions would almost constitute an ability. Like, this should be... This is the criteria. This bar has to be empty forever. So if I have to put the engineering thing on there, but I guess I could just do it from my spell book. Lol, but no, I mean, I'm not allowed to use any of that. Even my racial, I'm not doing. But arguably, stuff like that should be allowed. Right? Even if the context is you can't use your class abilities, you should be able to use like your racial, you should be able to use engineering, uh, profession stuff. You should be allowed to use items like in your bag, potions and stuff. But effectively, I'm trying not to do th those things either. <sighs> yeah, playing Town of Salem like that almost made me want to play Town of Salem too because that's something I've never gotten around to doing. It's a good excuse to maybe have segued into that. Look at this pal get palled in fucking mitigation skills here. You no, know, I almost would feel incentivized to use a shield at some point, but this is a little lame to do, I would say, because oh, you know, I haven't even really played a paladin period, so why would I want my first experience to be this shitty? But then oh wait, it's the fact that look look at this food buff that we're gonna get. That's really gonna carry me. But the fact is that this is basically what playing a paladin would be like anyway. It's just, you know, you'd be slightly uh I could use that, but I don't have a one-handed weapon. So we're really going to have to learn a new ability after unleashing 10 seals on your enemies. That's amazing, but this is the one example where I can't actually do that. But no, debuffs like this would really fuck you over because I need every little bit of help I can get, you know, trying to do this shit. I mean, this would be a sort of fun thing I would do if I had more time. But no, that's the one thing I want to try to figure out. I've just been so busy this week with all the shit that was going on. Uh, with not even being able to use the setup and stuff. So maybe I'll try to figure that out. How I can get some of these older school games to work. Yeah, probably nobody's ever heard of any of those games. Like it's, it's like X Extreme Games that starts with the letter X. And it's like had this collection of games that I played when I was super young. Like we didn't have a computer. So we had like SNES slash NES. And then at one point my mom broke my broke it by mistake. So then to make up for it, she... Uh, got maybe we got like an N64 at that point to make up for the fact that she broke it So if she didn't break it, maybe I wouldn't have gotten one for a while something like that happened But no also we went to our uncle. I went to my uncle's house at one point and they're, they're kind of a little wealthy and a little better off And so the point is that they gave us a computer as a gift and we didn't have one and then with that computer I tried all kinds of computer games and so some of those were, again, like extreme games that starts with an X. So it included like, uh, you know, again, uh, Neon Light was one game. It's like, again, like a platform that copies Mario. Then like one game, um, Atlantis. Uh, there was a game called Ascension where you're like some RPG fighting like a dragon and you get to choose between these three classes or something. And then Ascension or Arcane with like a K-A-R-K-A-N-E. Like the game studio and then so all these kind of things that i just remember this is how you know i'm born to be a chess player look at that fucking memory that i remember these random fucking things 
but I, I just had this craving, like I just want to go back and be able to play them, which I could guarantee to be able to play them on like a super old system, I'm sure, right? I could go back and get a computer like that, which would be probably pretty awkward to do, but for the sake of streaming it or recording it, I would definitely want to, you know, be able to figure out how to do it on here. You have these tools like DOSBox and stuff, but it's just not super clear. Or, you know, the, the best strategy for this kind of run, too, is always fight yellow enemies and always fight ones that are, like, two, the rule of two. Like, never fight two things at once, but also fight things that are about two levels or lower than you, right? And also fight stuff that isn't hostile, so it would never aggro on its own, so you always control the encounter, right? All of these elements are good, even though these are, these are not the ones that it's telling me to do, but I almost want to get to level nine first. Just because I don't like this whole level distinction that we have. Right, that we're fighting like level 7s and 8s and we're only level 8 myself. You know, those are some games I remember. Then I got some other little game disc collection stuff later. Which was like a Crazy Drake, which is like a copy of Earthworm Jim. That game had some pretty sick fucking music to it. I, I like that. And then we had, you know, the Taco Bell game I remember. This is what Throwback Thursday should be about. Like, go back as far as you possibly can. Then I remember a game called, uh, or all the Hamumu games, which those I actually did play. Those weren't too hard to get to work with. I guess they weren't quite as old, like early 2000s. Some of these are like early indie games, like before we got the modern explosion of, oh, you know, Binding of Isaac and Don't Starve and whatever, right? In the indie market, you had these, like, oh, Hamumu was an indie developer in the early 2000s, so... Yes, there were really good AAA games that had come out then, but it was still a good novelty, and it was, it was actually a pretty good game, like Kid Mystic, uh, Spooky Castle, stuff like that. Uh, Professor Layton Supreme with Cheese is a pretty... That one might be their best, most well-known one. So you had all of those, and I'm trying to remember what other kind of things come to mind. <laughs> the Extreme Game Collection, there was like a game called Cult. That was like some sort of text-based game. I don't really even remember playing it, but I remember like the ending, I think, that was just like some text box and I was kind of disappointed. It's like, you just walk up to a dude and talk to him and the game is over. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Uh, how is that for a final boss fight? The most disappointing ending to a game since, uh... what, I don't even have a good reference for that. What is a disappointing game ending that Bioshock Infinite that people fluffed that up way too much? Um... Yeah, cult. They were part of like certain collections, right? Extreme Game Collection, E Games was one of them. It was just like a letter E, right, with like a dot in it as the logo. So E Games had a lot of those. Uh, I think that's where maybe Crazy Drake was from. I don't like these wolves going around like that. So this this is the true essence of throwback that I'm trying to play into, but I can't really figure it out because it's so annoying. They'll all require like different Windows systems and they'll all be super hard to probably record. I did do the Hamumu games though, just to be clear. I did it as like my 100 follower celebration. So that didn't, that still took a little bit of work to get to record, but that was fun, at least from the perspective that I w they're all pretty hard and I was doing like a permadeath run of each and I kind of speed ran through and died in almost all of them, but whatever, it was still cool to try that. And I think he even made those free now. Yeah, there's some of these games that are actually pretty good that are like shareware or like they kind of come with your computer. So when you when you bought like your computer back in the day, it would have some of these games already pre-installed or it would have like uh, some kind of... Uh, see, now you know it's safe to run there because we already saw that everything there is uh, like defensive basically the yellow shit um so yeah those are some of the things like they would come with your computer and this again sometimes games that's even obscure and not even very good but i'm definitely very obsessed with the idea of trying to get some of those to work no question about it these guys are getting me a little bit too low to the point where i'm not happy about these encounters but what is even in here anyway now see this guy was a level eight before though i thought so that one's just a level 7, but there's something in there that's going to be... Okay, let's go for it. Yeah, I sh instead of doing... So oh, fuck off. Instead of doing this, I should have done, you know, one to... Si well, if I did this as a constant, 
recurring series, I should do one of my full 1 to 60 or 1 to max level permadeath runs off, uh, this is an elder at least, off any of these other MMOs that I haven't done. Like I started a lot of them, like EverQuest, I made a character and I'm like, okay, we're just doing it in my Saturday format, like when I, where I'm playing a game that I've never played before for the first time. But instead of just simply doing that to open the door, it's also a first playthrough permadeath where I'm trying to get from one to max level without dying. But, and if I die, I have to delete the character, the playthrough is over. But I should actually pursue it and actually do it all the way. Like that's what Path of Exile was supposed to be. That's what uh, EverQuest could be, even RuneScape, even though I played that maybe a little bit before. Get, you know, same thing, get to max level. And uh, even Lord of the Rings Online, a lot of these MMOs that I played for the first time, Dungeons and Dragons Online, but I just never have the time to do it. So I just do the first episode just as the obligatory, I'm playing a game I've never played before, right? But then it opens a door to make a series out of it. I just don't necessarily have the time to do that. So yeah, we had a little scare moment there. But we just have to rely on quest rewards to really give us some good items here. I'm going to get like a single uh, one-handed weapon that's better than this one, right? So then I can use it with my shield just because this one's kind of outdated by now and shitty. So it's not going to be a big deal. You have this rune mechanic, all these kind of cool abilities, but I will suffer. And I will show like the temperance and sort of discipline that the light has taught me as a paladin. That I have this minimalist, like I'm a monk, Gandhi type guy who's just so at peace with the world that you don't have to even use abilities. You believe in non-violence even though you are killing everything in fucking sight all the time. So just by simply doing this quest, we should get to... Well, I mean, we'll get to level 9 here anyway. Okay, we better stay away from the middle there, but some of these wolves run around a bit too much and makes me a little bit nervous. So yeah, next week I'll do Cataclysm, where I just kind of explore Cataclysm Classic a bit. And what I'm disappointed with Classic actually is that they they released uh, BC, but then as soon as Wrath came out, they got rid of the BC servers. Why not learn from how much people want these kind of things to realize that uh, you should keep it around forever in some form? Keep like at least one server around for each one, like how they still have classic around even without season of discovery. I'm pretty sure you can still play this regular classic. So why not have one server for BC classic two? Now one server for Wrath classic, even though uh, Cataclysm is out. They they always miss the point. Like oh you think you do but you don't. But then they realize people actually do, and then they try to milk it with microtransactions and stuff. But then you get yourself in a position where. Um, now you do something right for once, but then you don't realize it and you think, oh, well, now it served its purpose. So now we're too lazy and too cheap to keep the servers up. And if we do that, then, you know, oh, now people are going to be craving it again. I wish I could play BC once again. Like, it's just this like home console sort of mentality that like you want to play what you want to play when you want to play it. See, so any day you're like, oh, today I feel like playing BC and just fucking around, whatever. Right. It doesn't mean it has to be a full commit that you get from one to 70. You just want to try it. You just want to do a certain thing, but you'll never be able to is the impression that it gives because it's just not available to play, which is so dumb. Right, so you don't want to have to feel like you rely on private servers, but Blizzard just always has that mentality. They'll do something right, but then they'll they'll always fuck it up. So when they, they first they don't want to do the re-release Classic WoW and stuff. Then when they do it, they won't keep it up forever. Then when they do it, they'll they'll do microtransactions and kind of taint it and ruin it. Like, there's too many things that are wrong with that. The Snow Leopards don't actually seem too bad. They're not doing enough damage through my sexy fucking armor value here. We have the little Ice Claw Bear there. Uh, level 8. Th those can kind of get me pretty low. Like, the level of difficulty goes Snow Leopard is the weakest. Crag Boar is, like, in the middle. And then this guy is the strongest based on how much health we're actually losing in some of these. Yeah, if I was a warrior, I could just shoot that with a bow or a gun. Or wait. No, I guess that would count as an ability too. Or maybe not. I guess it couldn't because then a hunter would be like, oh, you can't auto shoot. Right. Yeah, that's actually the whole thing is that nobody else even gets the ability to do that. So technically that would count as a hunter ability. Right, like auto shoot is not something you could normally do. Not that you would really want to or need to be able to do it, but... 
Like, you can't really consider attack to be an ability, because then otherwise, what the fuck can you do? Yeah, for some games, you could just do a pacifist run, so maybe... You know, you obviously can't do that in Classic, at least. you could Maybe the earliest you could do it is the Mist of Pandaria, because of that... Whatever, the professions give you experience and stuff at that point. But the point is that... Or maybe they started in Cataclysm with... No, I don't know. Maybe they could have, so maybe somebody could get to from 1 to 85 or whatever by doing that, but... I guess what was notable is the guy did it in the starting zone itself, which you could theoretically do in any starting zone, like in, you know, you could do it in Goldshire or something, uh, oh, in Forest, but the point with that is you don't even have to leave the starting zone that you're trapped in, in like an instance, in tutorial, in like, uh... In the, uh, whatever, Mr. Pandaria zone. Pandaria is what it's actually called. Yeah, I always shat all over that premise. Let's shit all over Mr. Pandaria and let's shit all over Paladins. All we need is a Paladin, uh, a Panda Paladin, and that'll really fucking push me over the edge, which I don't know if they could even become that. But what happens is you get in a situation where people would defend Mr. Pandaria and say, oh, some of the raids were good or some of the content was actually good. But that's not what I'm questioning. What I'm questioning is the premise that was a clear attempt to appeal to the Asian market in a contrived way that was sort of inorganic to the actual lore, where people will try to defend it and play devil's advocate like, oh, well, they had this uh, one panda unit in Warcraft 3, so therefore that proves there's an entire continent that we didn't know about full of pandas. Like... You know, that doesn't make sense. Why isn't there a whole co continent for goblins then? You know, Kazan is not what the whole expansion is about. It's just a zone. So even for, an ex even for a race as significant as goblins, they don't get their whole expansion like that, right? Where Cataclysm isn't their expansion. They're, they're a part of it, but it's not a whole continent just based around them and all their lore. Whereas that was a total ass pull that's totally inorganic to the lore, like to make it that big of a deal. And it's almost like a filler expansion that's also meant to appeal, again, to the Asian market. And so it's done for strictly cynical reasons. And on top of that, you have a situation where you're basically able to look at it like, uh, what else did I say? They, they were sort of panda ring instead of pandering, like panda ring to the Asian market, etc. But also on top of that, it, again, you're going to say, oh, it's not inorganic to the lore. But I'm not saying pandas can't exist or be a race in the game. I'm saying that there shouldn't be a whole expansion just based around them and a whole continent that's bigger than, like, fucking, you know, North Rand or whatever on par with the size of these other continents. That's taking it a bit too far. And also, you know, it makes you wonder, like... It's like a filler type expansion when you have so much rich lore to draw from. Is that really something you want to do where it just doesn't feel organic? And again, there's one panda unit in Warcraft 3, so people use that to justify all of that. But that's the point is all they were was a one off thing that they, they were just some miscellaneous mercenary unit. So why not make an expansion about ogres and their continent? Or why not make an expansion about goblins and make a whole continent about them? Because goblins were not just some miscellaneous unit, they were actually had major significance and appeared a lot in uh you know even throughout wow where they have gadget zan and they have a booty bay and they're always like the the neutral havens because i always like my interpretation of that or whatever the intended interpretation is like the one thing that makes the alliance and horde come together and be at peace is not any sort of uh, good moral uh, camaraderie or something like that. It's actually just money and greed. The fact that the goblins are like, oh, that's bad for business, violence, so we're not going to allow it. So money is what money is the one thing that brings about peace in Vanilla WoW from the most cynical, you know, greedy race in terms of the goblins. So it might not be for the right reasons, but the most peaceful zones in the contested area would be like Gadget Zan and Booty Bay and uh, all the other, you know, Ratchet, all the Ratchet's kind of on horror territory anyway. But even there, they try to broker peace. So that shows you the only way to get peace in a realistic, cynical worldview is actually for, to make it about money, right? It's not actually about peace or some other idyllic standard. So it's greed that actually greed is good, as Gordon Gecko would say. That is one of the deeper, more interesting interpretations of the story from WoW, right? Like, everywhere else, the Alliance and Horde are killing each other, trampling over each other's corpses, and can't wait to get at one another. But you're forced to find peace finally 
right? But again, not for some other good reason. It's just because, you know, it's like an expression that Michael Jordan used about, you know, Republicans buy sneakers too. Where it's like, you know, you, it doesn't matter what your beliefs are. It's like you want to try to profit off both sides. So I'm not gonna, I'm going to stay out of politics. Where he never made like political statements or tried to get involved with stuff because he would just. Uh, well, if he was as bad at that as he was at uh, owning a team, then it's a good thing he stayed out of politics anyway. But no, the point is that with this judgment being so bad, but the point is that you're basically like, you have, it'll be a big debate whether I should even be allowed to use talents or not. I would almost want to go the whole way. You obviously should be able to, and most of them aren't even going to help you or matter that much, but level seven. Um, oh, we already killed enough bears. Uh, I don't like how close some of this shit gets. Or, you know, there could always be a rule that you do where you always pull everything almost out of its aggro range. So even if something goes wrong, something else aggroes, you get a mitigation chain, you have to get away at the last minute. You won't have to go too far. Even I'll be at leashing, although I completely forget how leashing works. I got so mad with one of those fucking alligators in the goddamn, uh, not even in the barrens, but in the, oh, what is this? Why are we seeing all these fucking, well, I guess because the server's dead, you'll see more of these. We see an elite here and we see a fucking rare spawn there. Not that this is even hostile to you, but there'll be some weird mechanic, like if you attack a boar in its presence. Then you will, uh, what is that hut? I guess it's like a troll hut. Or no, it's fucking, what? I mean, that's not actually the entrance to Nomergon, but you probably shouldn't fuck around here anyway. But most of these leper gnomes are pretty low level. What, what is this? This look kind of out of place. Okay, you better watch out. But no, the way that Hearthstone took the lore of this game was actually pretty inspired. There were a lot of good uses of stuff, but even there, they sort of started to pull stuff out of their ass and just make stuff up when they don't have to, when you have so much good lore to draw from. So it's the same idea with this, like, when you had so many good lore expansions, ideas to potentially draw from, the Emerald Dream slash Nightmare at the time, or the South Seas that they were going to do, which is kind of like what they did with BFA, or the Twisting Nether, which they kind of did with Legion, right? All these ideas for... Uh, for expansions, I think these were even official names that were floated at one point. The Twisting Nether was supposed to be the name of an expansion, or, again, the South Seas was definitely one. And uh, what was the other one I just said? Uh, I can't remember, but the point is, yeah, instead of doing those, let's just do the fucking stupid-ass thing. The uh, Mist of Pandaria, again, you're just sort of milking it a little bit, dragging it out. All the whole five level expansions felt kind of a little weird too. Like, why make it like that? And so now you have a situation of... Th there was something else I said about pandas too, but I can't remember. But yeah, you take one miscellaneous unit and make a whole continent expansion based off that. That feels very insincere. I really need a quest reward that's going to give me like a better weapon or something. That's because this is the only source of damage you're ever going to have. But no, a Paladin is about top tier of what you could do in this kind of no ability run. But no, my point is instead of just doubling down on my WoW addiction, I should almost have... Uh, not that I really play it at all anymore. Like, this is all I've done in the last... In six months, I've done like maybe four episodes of this, all of which are only like an hour each. So, whatever. I'm not really doing this as a committed series, but... I should be playing a game I haven't played for the first time and doing it that way instead of doing um, just redoing WoW in some other different sense. But it, it is one of those things that almost gives you a midlife crisis type of thing where I've been nervous and that's why I made the Saturday format in the first place. Like, oh, I'm afraid a game will go offline and then I'll never get to play it and you'll never be able to play all of them, right? There'll never be enough time in your whole life. But that's the same thing with any of these other games. Like, as much as I played WoW... Right, look at how many things I could have missed out on, or it's kind of like, even in WoW, there's still more I would want to do, and I'll never get around to doing other kind of challenge runs, different things, so. 
is maybe that insecurity that makes people rush and try to metagame min-max everything to the extent of being able to, you know, sort of zerg through, rush through, but that's kind of missing the point too. I would want to enjoy the experience all along the way too, which is that level of patience or whatever. Immersion is something that's lost on people all the time. Or there'll be sometimes these padding mobs that, uh, you know, re really catch you off guard. So we need only two more lepers. I could try to take these two at once, but clearly I can barely take one, so fuck it. We have three clumped up together, and I have to strategically somehow kill just two of them. Look at this clown fucking padding around. Like, what is he doing? And he's even the level seven, so he knows to stay close to his comrades here. These ones tend to be the easiest of what we're fighting here, though, and they're kind of, like, very weak. I won't even get close to level 10. Holy shit. But no, I even avoid... I've been trying to read quest text a lot here and I've in these series, and I've been uh, trying to avoid rest experience, actually. Right? I mean, if I don't play for so long in between session, you know, if it's literally months between them, then I won't be able to, but... You know, you'll have full rest anyway. Yeah, these two together, it seems like a death trap. I don't even really have to do it, but... Maybe when the one's not looking, I'll try to get him. Or they could be sort of tied together and meant to be like that, which almost seems like the case. Because they're just very, uh... I don't know, they're on like some sort of tether. Fuck off. Okay, there's no reason to really risk it. I often am always on top of things. Like, I'll, I'll know when I'm going to die or when something's going to go wrong, but then I won't take my own advice and I'll just, oh, I'll just try to do it anyway, and then I end up dying. Like, that happens a lot in chess where, you know, oh, I'm going to lose and if I do this, and then I'll do it anyway, and then I'll lose. Like, what the fuck? If I just took my own advice, I'd be invincible, but... Right, I always have had this sort of association with being objective where... I'll be self-critical, or I'll sort of say something that, oh my god, say something that might be uncomfortable to realize, but you get your little sneak attack in, bro, but it's not going to work this time. It almost worked in the fucking middle there. Or I would have loved to just reset one of them. You know, that hunter run would have been so epic. We had so many close calls. We had a lot going on. Bro. You can't see me because the tree is blocking his view, you see. You're like, why is backpedaling even bad here necessarily? Because that's one thing I'll never backpedal on is how shittily designed paladins are, or even how uh you know, again, Mr. Pandaria felt like pandering to certain whatever and just not very authentically done. Now, I'll try to get back in my schedule to the point where I also do maybe these chess sessions here and there with respect to, and of course, you can't use that anyway, but what do you call it? Like, whenever I had free time, I would do a chess session. There's like a little extra bonus thing. We're almost done with the permadeath variant gauntlet. And also, I, uh... oh, you know what rule we would break here, though, is we would break the whole thing of the... Fuck. We would break the whole thing of the camp thing because we already rested here. Where we have to rest in like a different location every single thing. Every single uh, episode. And of course Iron Forge doesn't really count. So could we find like some other campsite that we maybe miss? Like the Horde area seem to have more of those. Like where there's like a random... Oh shit. There's like a random hut or something. Where is the rare spawn though? Yeah, whatever. This is a fun series. Oh, I should have turned that in, though. This is a fun series, but it's not one that I'll probably ever complete. But not because I would actually fail it, of course, because clearly I was going to never die, but whatever. It is interesting, nonetheless.
Or you could interpret it differently too, like, oh, I'm gonna do a character with abilities, but you're naked all the time, but this would be much harder. Even if you're naked, it's not that big of a deal because most of the time when you're leveling, especially at a low level, your gear isn't that good anyway, or it's not gonna make that big of a difference. But not being able to use abilities is pretty fucking harsh because whatever, you know, you're only gonna be auto attacking and it's gonna be very strict. Off with you. Thank you. It'll be nice to work out our crafts without hearing so many growls and snorts outside the village. Here's your casket, Evershine. And again, thank you for... Oh, here we go. But none of these are really that good, man. Uh, here's your casket, Evershine. Uh, give it to Steel Grills Depot. What's on your mind? What's he wants a six trimmer weed. But no, I, I don't really know. I guess we could go to one of the depots or something. I don't remember whether I've rested there, though, or not. I almost feel like I just have to... I don't know. I guess I may as well do it since I'm here, but I don't almost really want to. Or the one thing I wasn't using is like my hardstone either, ever. The only hardstone I need is the actual fucking card game, which was kind of like the perfect name because, you know, it's to imply that like you're at an inn and you're kind of just relaxing by the hearth and playing a card game. In sort of the RP sense that characters in this universe would potentially play it. It's like if you were to play a card game with real world leaders, like I have Hitler and you have Stalin and somebody else has Mao and we're we're playing a card game with all these different people and whatever they all have their own special strengths and weaknesses and abilities, like I'm sure there is one like that, I straight. Which nobody could clearly get offended by because they're all you know, it's just a game. But that's one of the clips I wanted my friend to upload. He always does this, these little, like, stupid meme post videos where it's, like, the reason why Red John doesn't like chess or something. And he has this line in The Mentalist where he says, there's a winner and a loser. That's a game, right? Because Jane's saying, like, uh, they have this exchange, like, you were fun and challenging, and then he's like, it's not a game. Like, the game's over and I won, and then he's like, it's not a game. There's a winner and a loser, that's a game. But he would say, like, that's why he doesn't like chess, because there isn't a winner and a loser in chess, because 50 plus percent of the time, at every level even, objectively, every game is a fucking draw, and so it's not a game because, you know, there isn't a winner and a loser. It's just th This is the kind of joke template format that somehow we always come up with. And some of them, we, I, I would normally dismiss it and say, oh, that's just dumb, because that's just, I don't think highly of that kind of thing, but you'd be surprised, because some of them get so many views and so many likes, like some, my other friend comments shit all the time. There's like the unholy trinity, where I sometimes will make the joke, then the one friend might co steal and comment the joke, and then the other friend might actually upload it and turn it into a video, all of which is really stupid, but... Oh shit. These fucking movement patterns, bro. Like, why are you moving like that? But no, I'm very eager to get a different weapon, but I guess I could just get it from the shop. We have like five silver. We'll just buy like some stupid ass thing that might be slightly better than the one I have. That, that would be such a transformative difference because. But whatever, who knows? I might never ever play this again for the rest of my life, which I was almost ready to say that. If I had gotten that 100 to 60, I would have felt satisfied. And I, I was trying to close the book on the experience by making it super immersive, reading all the quest text, etc. too, but it just didn't happen. Right, there's nothing I can really say. And of course, that had other formats built in too, but it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, it had uh, melee only and stuff like that, and permadeath pets and stuff. Sometimes those videos, when I post like little clips of stuff, you know, have I rested here? I don't know. I genuinely have no idea. Or this should count as Karanos, shouldn't it? Because it's like too close. So I should put it like... I should go to one of these other ones, like Misty Pine Refuge I probably haven't rested at, or the other thing. I, I think I rested here, actually. Let me try this Misty Pine thing. But no, it's like... Sometimes people just either don't know what you're doing, or like you're doing a certain format or 
they just assume it a certain way like oh why isn't he doing this or he doesn't he know better or something but like it's just a preference like you want to do a certain format it's like why why is it, why are you doing a hardcore like why are you doing a permadeath run because oh you know there's no add-on yet like in the past if you know you would do a format that you could have always done but only when everybody jumps on the bandwagon does it become normalized it's like you know you can always do formats i'm not saying you have to but that's just my preference so people will just sort of dislike the core idea of what you're doing or not understand it or have like a very cynical narrow minded view of it because i don't know like you're, you're judging what they're doing not how well they're doing it like right like with this run i'm choosing not to use any abilities i'm not saying that's a big deal or a good thing or a bad thing or whether you should do it i'm just saying that i remember going here i mean it's it's on the map but i don't know if i rested here or not i'll just assume i haven't the series is only like four episodes but i'm already confused by you know uh, my one condition that is the hardest and most annoying condition of my whole rp playthrough style every episode i have to end right in a different hut or house or something like a town counts as one so you can only use that once but it became so difficult to do that even at like level 20 plus with the hunter and the reason why is because you i don't play these sessions for long enough so if it's only an hour session you're gonna end up running out of those fucking huts and houses in due course right especially when you get to a way higher level so either you'd have to play for a super long time or i don't know just sort of dance between the different zones and stuff okay see you tomorrow